Hey, this is Natsu, and today we're taking a look at the Tier 10 Premium Japanese Heavy Cruiser Yoshino. This is not a review, though, because I'm going on vacation and I can't really spend the time to make the review. Uh, I'm going to give you every thought that I have on it, but I'm not 100% behind every single detail because I'm still trying to get real comfortable with the ship. It's a very fragile experience, but it is one that is worth having, in my opinion. So the build's on the screen, we go double rudder, because the concealment doesn't help you dodge those shells. Your armor is nothing. Battleships laugh at it. So making myself more nimble will help me avoid it. And then as far as my commander, it's a pretty safe build. It's a very typical build that I have on pretty much all my heavy cruisers, with one exception. Instead of taking basics of survivability on the Oshino, I normally take Demolition Expert. Now I chose Basics of Survivability because this is a battle cruiser, as I'm doing air quotes that you can't see. It has terrible fire duration. You will burn for a very long time, unless you try and compensate for that, and that's one of the things I'm compensating for. Now let's talk about the Yoshino. It has a very cool camouflage that can be inverted to sort of a, a teal black appearance, or maybe a teal green. It is a very long ship. It's sort of designed around the idea that it's sort of a, a light Yamato. It's got nine 310 millimeter guns, and that's an important feature that I will highlight that are on three gun turrets. Now the turret traverse isn't the worst, but it certainly isn't the best. Expert Marksman does assist. It sits right in that wheelhouse with all the other Japanese cruisers, 30, 35 seconds, Getting it faster will allow you to engage targets more frequently. And speaking of frequency, these nine 310 millimeter guns have a default reload of in the, I think, 18 seconds, 17 seconds. With my reload booster module, I can get it down to about 16 or so, almost 15. With a drill and rush, absolutely can get in the 15 seconds. And that's pretty intimidating. That's a very nice reload. So the guns, Pretty fair reload, probably the fastest battlecruiser reload in the game between the Kronstadt, the Stalingrad, the Alaska, is there any more? I, I guess there's the Siegfried, but that's not out yet. I can't even give you my opinion on it. So what can you do with this? Well, you can put out a butt ton of damage. It has great range. There are two torpedo types. You can do the 12 kilometer range or the 20 kilometer range. Shima Zhao, you're familiar with these types. I use the 20 because I don't have any hope of getting in range to use the 12. My concealment is 13.9, I think, 13.5 with this build. If I didn't take the rudder, the double rudder, it would be in the 15 seconds. With the double rudder, it's uh, 6.7 6 seconds. So it's obviously much more nimble at long range and that's where you wanna operate. You wanna just fire on cooldown at maximum range or near maximum range on a target. So the guns are consistent, accurate. AP, it's solid, it's all right. But when you're at these kind of ranges, most enemies are gonna be angle tanking, bow tanking, because they wanna try and slow the game down and do damage to certain targets. So you will predominantly be firing HE just out of necessity for the type of targets you'll fire on. But the added bonus of the ship, this is 310 millimeter guns. That allows it to clear 51 millimeters of pin without IFHE. If you wanted to invest in IFHE, you could get up into the 57, the 60 millimeter, clearing those Kremlin and the Yamato deck armor so that you could farm them for days. The only part of the ship that would fully absorb it would be the guns, basically. But if you're aiming for the super, aiming for the deck, it would all pin. So that is a option. I don't know if it's a valid option because I kind of worry that picking IFHE just for two targets is real overkill. But if you were to play in a game without an aircraft carrier, you might argue that the manual AA skill is useless, irrelevant. And I would tend to agree with you. But still, IFHE for only two sections of two ships that you may or may not fight 
Yeah, it, it's a pretty steep requirement. Pretty steep. But it's nice that that option is there. You certainly can't get that kind of pin with the Zhao. And that's the difference between these two ships. Uh, in testing and after, I was sort of down on the Yoshino. I was just very disappointed in every aspect. Concealment, maneuverability, torpedo systems, consistency. Uh, the only thing I wasn't disappointed in is its look. It looks pretty cool. But since considering... Oh yeah, you're right. This does have a lot of pin base. This is basically a Hindenburg levels of pin. It has torpedoes that you can spam at long range, which will punish those bow tanking ships. It has torpedoes on both sides of the ship with really great angles. So you could conceivably use it across multiple areas of the map, which is great. Absolutely great. Once I've, you know, sort of incorporated more use of my torpedoes, I've seen more frequent hits. And no, I'm not sending torpedoes directly at a target using the indicator. They don't move fast enough, nor is it very reliable to hit a target that's that far away. So instead, I like to send torpedoes at the corner of islands or at predictable contesting locations, like at a objective or during a gap, you know, through a gap. And that's exactly what I did at a point on Sea of Giants. I felt like, you know what? There's a couple camping ships that want to try and long range fire. Wouldn't it be great if I hit some torps on them? And we're gonna see if that works out. Now, the 12 kilometer range is an option and oh, Izumo, you gonna take that torp? Nope, nope, the torp gets past him. Oh, he dodged it. He's like eight health, really, nine health. He's so, he's so dead if anyone shoots him. The 12 kilometer range torpedoes though are, are just not good. It's not usable at all. They are too shallow. You don't want to get that close in the ship. The ship really does love to be at max range where its advantage is the most obvious. And are we go, ooh, we get a nice hit on a bow tanking enemy battleship. I'm sure he's thrilled by the fact that the torpedo, oh, we got another hit, very nice. Which, those are basically a bonus compared to the Azuma. You know, the Azuma is, for all intents and purposes, this exact ship without the torpedoes. But with the torpedoes, you know, now you're getting into a situation where you can play at max range, but you can also impact both with your guns and your torpedoes. It's kind of intimidating because you don't know exactly what's going to happen. You don't expect the 20 kilometer range ship to have sent torpedoes your way. I don't think players really think like that. You know, probably the furthest out they think is maybe the 16 kilometer range torpedoes from the gearing. And even those, they've been going for a really long time. Most likely players aren't gonna be able. But since those torpedoes hit those targets, they probably put the flood out, overestimating that flood is too impactful. In response, we can follow up with some fires. It's a nice little bonus for having the torpedoes. It forces out damage control, most likely, does some torpedo damage because they are the Shimakaze 20 kilometer range torpedoes. And then you can just follow up with farming damage on your high explosive shells. And we're doing a good job against the Muskva. And the Muskva is one of those ships that is vulnerable to this type of ship. It is sort of in line with all those 50 millimeter IFHE ships, the Henri, the Hindenburg, the Yoshino, they can punish the Soviet heavy cruisers very, very effectively. It's a great little ship to have in your inventory if you're someone who, you know, maybe you can't play every single line. Maybe you're invested in the Japanese and you've, that's all you have time for. Well, outside of this ship, you really don't have access to 50 millimeters of pin. So that was one really happy revelation by myself. And I'm not like saying that, oh, I, I figure this out. But for me, the joys of figuring out that the Yoshino actually has a unique feature that the Zhao does not gave me a little bit more confidence in recommending the ship. Prior to that, it was like, what is the point? It has nearly the same fire chance. It has three less guns. It has worse concealment. It has worse maneuverability. It has effectively the same style of hull 
with worse rudder shift by far, like way worse rudder shift. So you can't get into an angle to avoid incoming. This is covered in 30 millimeters. So anything that can pin 30 millimeters overmatch, it's a problem. That's why you keep distance so that those ships are less accurate and less consistent. But you know, so far we've been doing a great job, farming a ton of damage, killing some ships, landing our torpedoes. AA's been all right, although not many have been attacking us. Ooh, a Minotaur. And I, I have been firing a hell of a lot of high explosive. But pretty much every target I have been presented with is bow tanking or is angled away so that, you know, the AP might be effective against a really lightly armored, but the HE basically kills them in the same amount of time. And that accuracy is wonderful. We cause a fire. Is it enough? No, the JB actually gets the hit. And I'm really hoping that this guy is not going to hit his torpedoes on me. And yep, cross shot. The vulnerability that the Yoshino has, it is absolutely a heavy cruiser Yamato. Its citadel is up, above the water. Any angle, you're really vulnerable. The Yamato is in that exact same category. It's probably the easiest battleship to citadel from range. This is probably the easiest battle cruiser to citadel from range. You really need to be very careful with crossfire, losing sight of the enemy's potential, you know, plays. If you let them shoot at you without punishment, you're going to get punished. It's that simple. There, there's really nothing else to say. Either you take them out and keep in mind their angle and their position, or they're going to punish you and kill you. It, it's just a ship that's that vulnerable. It's unfortunate that a battle cruiser is this vulnerable because it does limit your options. I would never take this into brawling combat, for instance. Never. Maybe the Zhao, but I would never expect to win in an engagement within 10 kilometers in the Yoshino. It's just that difficult to avoid shell damage. But if you play at max range, you know, make sure that you're not going to spam torpedoes into friendlies because that is obviously a threat with this play style. You don't want to just blindly send torpedoes. See the GK, he was on the inside. The kind of lead that I was required to hit the Zhao, it made me think twice about it, right? But not every Yoshino is going to do that. And I hope any Yoshino watching this or anyone who's interested in the Yoshino, you won't be contributing to the friendly torpedoes from 15 or 20 kilometers. It's not worth it to send and risk killing your teammates. You know, hold on to the torps, fire your guns on cooldown, and do as much as you can to help your team. One aspect of the ship that really hasn't been tested is its AA prowess. And I'm happy to report that this ship does a very good job of defending itself and its teammates from air, both with defensive fire, which is of course an option, and the fighter. Now you could swap the fighter for scout. You could fire basically at Yamato at full range, you know, just trade blows, but that's not gonna be as effective as most people wish. You know, it's not a consistent range. It feels very good at its normal maximum range of 21.3. But when you're using scout aircraft, you're asking for the shells to be in flight for a really long time. I really don't recommend the scout aircraft. But if the enemy aircraft carrier wants to try and attack you, if you're in the back line, you could possibly provide a support for a friendly battleship that's near you. This is a good tandem ship for a battleship player that wants to operate at 20 kilometers, you know, 18, they can then transition into maybe a closer brawl with still the Yoshino supporting from range. It really does excel at just being exactly what it is, long range fire support. There is very few platforms in the game that are as effective as this is at long range fire support, both in torpedoes, but also in the main battery. And you know what? I think the value is outstanding from a coal standpoint. I was worried that Wargaming would overcharge for the ship because it's basically an Azuma with torpedoes. But basically an Azuma with torpedoes at tier 10 has some value. 50 millimeters of pin, absolutely. Great AA defense when necessary. That's pretty cool. 
using the double rudder, it feels very nimble, nimble enough to deal with enemy aircraft carriers, different angle of requirement, you know, like the torpedo on a broadside, attack rockets from parallel or broadside, and then dive bombers going straight at you. It is, <laughs> this poor guy, we've knocked out both of his torpedo tubes on this side. He obviously is way outside of his torpedo range anyway. I can still send mine. So we're fighting our counterpart. The Zhao is doing a great job trying to stay alive, but this is so much easier for me than it is for him. You know, he would have to drop off detection, which is of course an option, but he couldn't fire. You know, I can stay here, fire at will, look for some fires, and feel very comfortable, feel very effective. And the guns themselves, you know, there's less non-penetrating shells on a target like this with these guns than maybe the Zhao would expect. Now, if you aim and you have the Zhao Legendary, nothing's going to match that in accuracy. But we're able to help our team from long range, be effective, and uh, the Oshino, it's actually pretty awesome. I do really enjoy the combination of all the different traits that came online with the ship. And I, I can't believe I'm saying that because I was just so down on the Azuma. But those torpedoes, they really do impact the way I feel about the ship a lot. Almost 200,000 damage done, three kills, 11 fires, two torpedo hits, 2,526 base XP, and we played to our strength. We stayed back, we fired on cooldown, we were the DPS for our team, capable of capturing bases and getting kills. So, very happy with this Yoshino play. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent and the most relevant uploads. You can also subscribe to my channel. We do daily World of Warship videos, first impressions, how to review news related. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.